We're Zoom and Betty. Our videos take you on adventures both around Victoria, Australia and also along in our dream of creating our very own homestead. Check out our channel for more adventures of both kinds. Hello! Hello! So today we're down at Cape Bridgewater near Portland in Victoria. We're sort of heading along the western coast um, almost towards the South Australian border pretty much. And Betty, apart from covering herself with sunscreen, as is the thing we should do here. Because <laughs> it's like 30 degrees today, of course we always choose the hot days to go adventuring. And so. this trail we're about to take, it looks like it's completely in the sun. There's like no shade at all to those people out there. Yeah. Whoops. Gross. <laughs> um, so what is the plan for today? Um, so we're going to go look at some cool shit. There's apparently some blowholes and some cool like rock formations called the Petrified Forest. Maybe some caves if we get time. We'll see. Cool. All right. Well, let's finish up the sunscreen and get out there. What was once a volcanic island, the Cape has now been joined to the mainland with the formation of limestone that makes this area a geologically fascinating mix of formations. Which walk are we taking today? Oh yes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, one hour. 250 kilometers. That's the guy. I can do that in my all stars. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the first walk we're taking today is out to Springs Lookout, which is a two kilometer round trip. We don't recommend this one for people that have mobility issues or are in prams due to the rocky ground and some steps you have to go across. Having said that, with the exception of the heat issues from there being no shade along the path, it was a nice flat trip with no scary hills to climb. It's school holidays, which kind of is quite surprising at the moment because there's not a soul to be seen. We saw a few people in the car park and a few people walking along the boardwalk right at the start. But as you can see, there's just like no one in any direction, which is really, really good. And I think that's due to the proximity from uh, Melbourne. I think Betty said that it'd take about four and a half, five hours to get here from Melbourne. So look that up when we're at home, but um, that might be the reason why there's just no one out here which is really good because you don't have to share it with very many people. The Cape Bridgewater area was settled by Europeans in the 1800s and by the 1850s was mainly inhabited by farmers who used the area to graze their cattle all along the cliff tops. It's led to a lot of erosion issues and all these years later it's still been a bit of a blight on the landscape. Sale yards were created in the early 1900s for the display and sale of livestock. This would remain the lifeblood of the community for a few more decades. However, through the 50s and 60s, the population would decrease and the livestock economy would dry up. By the 70s, people started to realise the tourism potential of an area with such great natural beauty and the area started to transition from farming land to tourist mecca. Look at that mermaid lagoon down there. Just wants me to go down there. It does look really nice. Look how nice and blue it is. Not sure if you can see how many flies there are right now. So many flies! Australia! So many flies! The formations we saw along the pathways reminded us very much of the Grand Canyon area from our American trip, except with the amazing sea view right next to it, or even some kind of surface you would found on Mars. It was also interesting that although the area seemed quite barren, life was still found growing in the most unlikely of places. Did you know that you've got 50,000 flies on your hat? My hat? On your hat? Oh, so do you! <laughs> Turn around. Oh, they've half flown oh, off. I saw the cloud <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> Springs Lookout oversees a cliff face where the water would travel through the basalt and limestone rocks, flowing through to create a fresh spring water on the rock pools. Amazingly, they used to bring cattle down here to drink via stone ramps. Never too much sunscreen. Uh, so oily. <laughs> the flies love it. Look at them all. Look at them all. Shut up. I'm so uncomfortable right now. <laughs> Thank you. 
we've decided to have a beach break because it was too hot when we got back from that first trip so we'll have some time playing in the water and this beach is pretty amazing there's hardly anyone here well there's probably double the amount of people here than what there was when we drove past earlier but it, compared to closer to Melbourne the beach is nice and clear so and it's an amazing beach so very excited Bridgewater Beach is the main beach in the area and is a huge attraction for visitors. It's four kilometres long, super wide and a super nice sandy beach and it's been ranked by the Royal Life Saving Club of Australia as one of Australia's top 10 beaches. It's the only beach in Cape Bridgewater area that's patrolled by Surf Life Saving Club, making it the safest option for water sports such as swimming, surfing or sailboarding. just popped out five minutes out of town or out of Cape Bridgewater just to check out Terrible Capes. Uh, the entrance is just across the road from, what is it? The Bridgewater Lake. Bridgewater, Bridgewater Lake entrance. Google Maps tries to send you up someone's driveway, so it's just before someone's driveway. <laughs> now it's going to be a steep 50 meter climb up to the... <laughs> it is a little steep. Could take us a while. <laughs> Described as dramatic and commanding and even eerie, the Tarragal Limestone Caves are a massive cave network stretching between the towns of Cape Bridgewater and Tarragal. Hidden in plain sight, the cave entrance is easy to drive right past it, but once you make it up to the opening, you will have magnificent views over Bridgewater Lakes and all the way to Discovery Bay. this lake area has two lakes there's this one here that you can see and then there's another one behind the hill over here and the one over behind the hill is actually the one that everybody's hanging out at and it looks so nice it's got grass backing up to the water um, we didn't stop to take photos while we were there there was heaps of people there but um, I can imagine it'd be quieter and it'd be just like a dream we're back in the land of no trees and 50,000 flies oh, there's only three on you at the moment oh, nice Oh, and about five on your head. I just almost ate one too. <laughs> so we went and we had our swim, we went and saw the caves, and the body temperatures cooled down a little bit more to tackle another walk that has no shelter the whole way along. <laughs> so we're back to check out the blowhole and what was the... The petrified forest. Petrified forest. Yep. That blowhole's not very blowy. It's not blowing much. <laughs> We misconstrued. I didn't. <laughs> really? Yeah. I, I was mis I was sold this, not what it was. Um, it, petrified forest is what we were told this was. And I expected it to be like an ancient forest that over time was petrified. But no, no, it's just rocks that they think looks like a forest. Well, I mean, it does a little bit. Sure. I mean, it's cool, but. It's Joey. <laughs> Do you want to tell everyone what just happened with oh. your 50 million flies on your hat now? I was talking and a fly went in my mouth and hit the back of my throat and made me choke and then I almost vomited it up. <laughs> but it, and then he came out and then he was just, he was still alive on the ground. I was just like, that was... Are not, you okay? Not delicious. <laughs> not delicious at all. Maybe nutritious though. 